Hello ladies and gentlemen, PlayAsia supplied me with this copy of this game, so if you want to support me and the channel, use the link in the description to go and buy something, and there's also a coupon code you can use to save a couple of bucks off your order. You'll be helping me out, and hopefully you'll be buying something good. Thanks for your support, enjoy the show. Well, I made it about seven hours into Death Stranding, and I found myself just not really wanting to play it anymore, which, considering that this is a Hideo Kojima game, even that's impressive. I've played almost every game, he game, every game Hideo Kojima has been a part of, except things like um, Lords of Shadow, and I believe I haven't played Arctic Adventure on the MSX yet, but outside of them, I just find myself, like, getting worse and worse on his games as time goes on. Maybe he isn't as qualified as all of us thought, who knows. But anyway, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'd like to talk to you about Death Stranding for a bit. So... As I said, I've only played through about 7 hours of the game, and this is a game that can go for anywhere between 40 to 70 hours, so take this as it is, and that's, as always, first impressions, because, well, I'm not going to go through the rest of this game. I just can't do it. I cannot, under any circumstance, bring myself to get through it. And again, I am a person who has played a lot of Hideo Kojima stuff. I'd be trying if I wanted to, but I don't. So, I'd like to talk to you about how I've been thinking about the game so far in comparison to... Well, not in comparison to, but in addition to all the reviews and stuff I've read so far, which have given me a couple of ideas about the rest of the overall game that, well, we'll talk about them when we'll get to them. I promise not to spoil anything, but, you know, if you're the sort of person who wants to go into a Hideo Kojima game, I'll just warn you right now, it's fetch quests all the way through. Surprisingly annoying fetch quests. If you can't deal with that, just watch this on YouTube. Watch the commentary, not commentaries, watch the cutscene compilations that will be on YouTube within the next couple of weeks. You'll be fine. But for now, let's talk about it. And I will say this. I didn't actually get to see much of the plot because here's the thing about Death Stranding. You get about like two hours worth of cutscenes in the first three hours and then it just kind of stops. You get like little cutscenes every now and again from like holograms and things like that but it's literally just talking heads saying something to you related to the gameplay more than it is anything related to the plot you get a couple of like in, uh, intermission cutscenes that has you learning a little bit more about certain characters but outside of that it's just yeah you don't really get much you'll mainly be focused on the gameplay which is getting from place to place with a big set of packages in a timely manner that's the entire thing it is a walking simulator, although it does have things like driving around and things like bikes. It's mainly going to be walking for multiple reasons, which we'll get to shortly. But yes, the first thing I'll say about Death Stranding, though, and this is a point in its favor, is that it's got that Hideo Kojima thing of being really intensely detailed. It's all applied to the walking around. You are Sam Bridges, a porter, but you're basically a glorified mailman. You have to take these packages across the land to try and avoid getting damaged as much as humanly possible and give them to other people so that you can relink the entire United States via a series of like stations throughout the world that end up feeling a little bit more like Ubisoft towers than they do actual cities because you don't see any actual people and it feels so weird that you don't. But anyway... Walking simulator. You walk. You basically just stroll through the world. You have equipment that you can use to get through, o through or over certain obstacles like rivers and rocks and walls and stuff like that. And you have to fight off certain kinds of enemies along the way too, although you don't really get any weapons to fight them off with. Just like a stealth kill sort of thing and then just a really basic punch, which is not particularly great to use, but we'll get to that. The thing about the walking is that at first it's really satisfying to do. You are very easily manipulated by things like the slope of the terrain under you. So walking up onto a hill and finding your way budging to the right a little bit. Very satisfying, very well done. They obviously spent a lot of time on this. And when you've got a lot of cargo on, making sure that it's all properly balanced is something that's very important. Although it's really easy to make sure that it's perfectly balanced. You just hold the triangle button on the cargo menu and that's basically worth nothing. So... You just end up setting everything automatically and just wandering on, seeing if you can get to the end. And it's actually quite simple because, again, it's a walking simulator. You've got rivers that you need to try and find the shallow paths to cross. You've got rock walls that you need to put ladders up on or get to the top and throw a rope down for usage later. Although it turns out that 
the further on into the game you go, the earlier stuff that you put down starts to disappear. So that kind of sucks because you do really want to keep some of that stuff around for your own personal use. But if you're planning on going back and getting the Platinum Trophy, which basically evolves down to do lots of fetch quests for particular areas, it just kind of ends up being, oh, I have to put all this stuff down again. Crap. Well, that's a thing. But yeah, even when you've got like a big load of cargo on your back, it feels really heavy and slow, which is kind of the point. And you even have to adjust your balance by using the left and right triggers um, a lot of the time. Too much of the time, I would might say, in fact, because you really do have to walk along at either a really slow speed or be constantly watching your monitor, trying to make sure that he stays balanced by wearing out your L2 and R2 triggers for the most part. It's really frustrating in that regard because you just have to do it constantly and it starts to get on your nerves after a while, especially since that going with a lighter load usually isn't an option because if you're going somewhere new or if you aren't particularly sure of the route you need to take, you end up in this position where you need to take along both an order, although it usually ends up being more than one because considering you can't do things like fast travel between areas in this game, you need to wander back and forth between areas on foot all the time so if you're on your way to something you might as well take along a second order if you're heading in that direction so you've already got like two orders worth of carry weight on your back which is almost always nearly half your carry weight to begin with then on top of that you've got things like um energy that you need to keep your stamina up things like ladders and constructible buildings and um anchorings and just all sorts of little things like that, you know? I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, you've got all this stuff that just piles up on your back and you immediately find yourself filled like three-fourths of the way with stuff that you might end up needing later on. And unless you are really good with your memory, like I am not, you are probably going to find yourself needing to carry along a bunch of extra supplies just in case you find that the area you're planning on going through just doesn't have a way over unless you've got a lot of supplies on hand. It gets really frustrating like that. So yeah, you find yourself with this giant stack of stuff on your back, constantly trying to maintain your balance and walking really slowly across this land. And that's just what you do the entire time. But admittedly, it's kind of relaxing, especially when they start bringing out the music, if only because it's a relief that you know you're not going to be running into any enemies later on. But yeah, they start bringing in music from time to time. Uh, the environment really does look good, if a bit barren. It kind of has the... Excuse me. It has the Breath of the Wild thing going on, where the environments are just detailed enough to look good, although it might start to feel a bit emptier than it really should be after a while. But yeah, you're wandering along, avoiding random obstacles in um, reasonable ways, and it's fine at that point. It takes a really long time, and we'll come back to that, but yeah, you, it almost becomes relaxing after a point. Just slowly walking along, trying to figure out where you're going next, scanning for dropped items and stuff like that that you can pick up along the way, which of course add to your carry weight. They do let you do things like drop it off at things like mailboxes, so that you get a certain amount of the percentage of the um, reward you would have gotten for that package had you taken it back. So I, that's what I just did. I, it takes too much time to drag all these packages back and forth. But yeah. It becomes relaxing for a while. And then they start introducing stuff that feels like waste of time. My major favorite... Well, my, 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 let me try that again. My major worst time waster was Timefall. Which is the sort of rain that, in, that comes along with BTs. And... Basically, it damages your containers so that it's easy for them to get damaged if you do so much as, like, bounce off the wall the wrong way or something like that. And the game recommends that you get in cover as soon as rain shows up. It rains way too fucking much. I'm just gonna say this out and out. Way too goddamn much. Seriously. Every single time I went out the door, it would immediately start raining. Without fail. I got so frustrated, I just gave up and I just trudged through the rain every single time because God almighty, it's a pain in the ass. And there are things that are helpful to you in along the way as well. Like other objects from other players actually get plopped down if you're online, although there is an offline one that puts them down in some places, but not really enough. But 
when you have a, pl a lot of player objects, it becomes really useful. But here's the thing about player objects. They're useful after you go through the first time. Because you need to get places back on the network before other players' objects start to show up, which is why I say they feel like Ubisoft Towers. So you get all these other player objects back and suddenly you're able to go through areas a lot easier that took you a lot more effort to go through before. And it just kind of feels like a waste of your time. Because how much easier would it be if the objects started showing up for you when you were close to them so you could use them when you really need them, which most of the time is your first time through that particular area. There are other time wasters that they've got as well. Like, I know this sounds like a bit nitpicky, but considering how much time they seem to want to waste with you and your uh, just general play session, the fact that they have these safe areas around things like cities and buildings, but they only seem to have one place you can really visit, which is the place where you do things like drop off items, go to your private room and stuff like that. The fact that they make you walk like an extra minute from when you cross that barrier to when you get to where you're actually going is frustrating as hell. In a lot of cases, it's not like that. It's closer to like 15 to 30 seconds, but it's still frustrating getting to a thing and thinking, oh, I still have to make the walk a shame to the terminal at the very end it just it drives me nuts if i'm being perfectly honest so you just end up doing a lot of unnecessary walking which is then interrupted by a lot of unnecessary cutscenes because they give you like three different cutscenes while you're turning in things or recycling things or stuff like that and you can't skip this stuff immediately you have to either let it play through or be constantly hammering away at the pause button to skip them they do a lot of that too it gets even worse when you rest in your private room and you have to be constantly looking around, pressing buttons and waiting for the animations to play out. I feel like if they put more of this game behind menus, it would be a lot less frustrating because you could at least get back out onto the actual land and just start walking around faster. So all of those things I just mentioned are time wasters to me personally because it just feels like something they could have easily compressed down without really missing the point of the entire thing. But... Here's my least favourite time waster of all, and that is the BTs and the Mules. These are the two enemy factions that you need to fight. They do come across each other once in like a scripted event at the beginning of the game, but then they don't. So yeah, it's a bit weird like that. But you end up in a position where you need to get through them multiple times in this game. And they're all identical, apparently. There are a couple of like special boss fights and things later on that... Well, I'm not going to say anything more about them because I never got to them, so I don't want to comment on them. But apparently the regular encounters with the BTs and the mules stay about the same throughout the entire game. Which is really frustrating because on the surface they're cool and they're alright the first time or the second time that you end up running into them. But after the fifth or the sixth, you just think to yourself, I've had enough. I don't want to deal with these things anymore. They're so simple. Let me explain. So... We'll start with the mules, which are basically just humans that have gone insane and just value cargo over everything else. So when you wander into an area and just have some dudes charge you, that's basically it. So the idea is that you're meant to be able to stealth around them by doing things like hiding in tall grass and uh, just making sure you don't get detected by their cargo spinner. But every time their cargo spinner got off, I got detected and they just bum rushed me. Wherever they were all standing, they just ran straight at me. And all I was able to do was fight them off. Just wait for them to come up to me, hammer away at the square button, and hope they die. That seems to be, even on hard difficulty, which is what I started on, that seems to be like the major thing that, that you could do. Just hammer away and hope for the best. And that's basically what I did. And the combat in this game is really stiff and unpleasant to do. You can stealth around and get behind them and take them out like that. But when it sends out a cargo pulse and everyone's alerted to your position, that's it. You're done. You might as well give up and just wait for them to come to you and beat the shit out of them. I know you get things like guns and stuff later on, but apparently you really don't want to be killing these people. And actually, I can kind of understand why, because considering the context of the actual game, yeah, I can understand why you wouldn't want to actually kill them, but... Still, it's just frustrating. Just waiting for the doll to come up to you and then just hitting them. That's all you can really do. Then you've got BTs, which don't exactly give you that opportunity. They also require you to stealth past them. You have to get down to a crouch position. You have to hold your breath when you're close to one so they don't listen to you. But they don't seem to move by themselves. At least normally. There's this one time that they do in a scripted event, but they just don't seem to want to move otherwise. And 
I just find myself having to go through them really slowly and really boringly all the time being really boring. And that's basically all you can do because if you get caught by them, they'll rush in, they'll grab you, they'll drag you to a predetermined area and make you fight them. And by fight, I mean you just have to try and get out of their zone of influence. And once you do, they basically just up and go away. That makes it really frustrating too because it just makes it feel like less of an effort to drop all my crap, get caught, just get out of their zone of influence, go back and get my car going right away. I know Timefall will, will damage them, but considering how much that everything else seems to damage everything else in this game, it just feels like this is the path of least resistance of things that I want to do, and um, a, a path that I want to take. So, remove all of that stuff, right? Remove all of the stuff that I feel like is time wasters, and it really just does feel like a stretch from point A to point B over and over and over again. And the game seems to emphasize it, it emphasize this itself. So here's the rough gameplay mechanical description of what you do in the first few hours. You've got five or six places that you need to go to, right? You connect to one, then you go to the next, then you go to the next, then you go to the next. And then at that fifth area that you've been to, it says, all right, now you get to go back to the first area and get a mission from there, which will probably bring you not only back here, but send you down south even further than you've gone before. And then I looked back at all the areas that I had basically summited. I looked at it all. I was like, I just spent four hours finding my way across all that terrain, and you're trying to tell me that I have to go back and then come back again. Instead of like just giving me the proper mission that I need to do here, you're gonna make me go back and then come back to keep going. Which is really, really frustrating to a person like me. Now, I don't want to be the sort of person who says that 100 hour games shouldn't really exist, but this legitimately feels like stretching out the playtime to the point where it snaps and hits you in the eyeball. It, especially when you get to that fifth point, and they give you regular orders, which are like non-story related side quests. Think side ops in Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain, because that's basically exactly what they resemble. You have to take objects back and forth, back to places that you've already been. And yeah, you just have to load up on all these really massive amount of objects. Make the track uh, back, make the track forth, make the track back, make the track forth. And it feels like that you're gonna have to do this a lot if you want to go for the Platinum Trophy. Because one of them is, get every individual node up to five stars, which basically just involves doing the same fetch quests over and over and over and over again. And when I looked back on all that ground I had just traveled over the past like three to four hours, I said to myself, oh, fuck me, I really don't want to do this. And it was at that point, I knew my time with the rest of the game was limited. And I wanted to like it. I like Kojima. I like what he does. But man, this just feels like an absolute miss to me. This feels like something that will only appeal to the most hardcore of Euro Truck and EVE Online fans. And even then, it feels like it might be pushing things just a little bit too far. Maybe I should just stop looking forward to games. That seems to be the major problem. I just need to, like drink the cup of pessimism until there's nothing left in it because god almighty it's so weird like the f the first thing i thought about this game when i thought to myself all right i'm buying this but chances are i'm going to find a few things to like about it but i'm probably also going to absolutely hate it and i was absolutely right god forbid i was actually right about a prediction for a way that i would feel about a game for once who would have thought? I wish I had more to tell you, but that's basically all it is. It really is just wandering back and forth, surmounting simple obstacles, a lot of stuff that feels like an absolute waste of time, and a story that starts out really front-heavy then gives you nothing for a few hours. And from what I've heard, the overall progression of the story isn't much of a help either. Like getting a sort of like character background at the beginning of the chapter and then at the end of the chapter finding out their entire backstory in one go. Not to mention the final cutscene is apparently two hours long. So the entire game ends up kind of feeling like that as just a whole. And I just like, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. I've played so many long games that at least have had more of a sort of like 
appetizing spice to them at this point in playtime, and Death Stranding just has lost me completely. I have fallen off the strand. I think that's everything I've wanted to say, so... There you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all on Friday for what might be the most capybaras in a video to this date.